Here we are with another episode of Trash Can Talk Podcast. If you are not following us on YouTube, go ahead and do so right now. If you're listening on any other streaming platform, thank you guys. And we have back Narcan Nate. What up? Um, you're one of the first. What would it be like? Second episode? Dude, it was like, yeah, it was one of the first episodes that you recorded. Let's see what that got on views. Yeah. I mean, now we get like maybe a thousand. Where are we at here? So let me look. I just, I'm super interested in seeing what that one did. Yeah, now look it up. We got about 149 views. Sick. <laughs> but that literally was like one of the first ones. So the last episode got 4.5K views. Okay. So it's okay. great to have you back. Yeah, thanks for having me. At least the platform's a little bigger now. Who knows what we can do in numbers this time? Um, what have you been up to since the last time you were here? Oh, dude, so much. I mean, uh, traveling a lot, you know, doing shows and, like, growing the work that I do. I mean, I went to Mexico for, like, spoke at an event. I mean, I'm still doing free shows in L.A., like, tabling, you know what I mean? Right. I've... Like in three months, I mailed a hundred thousand test strips out all across the U.S. and even like into Europe and other countries at like no cost. Um, that's not counting what I mailed out on my own. So I did that. Um, pushing like naloxone, doing a lot of work in Mexico. I'm like bringing in like hygiene products and stuff like that into like pr like four prisons over there in Mexico because it's like, yo, seriously, they're like packed like twelve plus deep into a cell and they have like no hygiene products. It's so bad. Um, and just, you know, I mean, job wise, I mean, I'm, I'm wearing like five hats at work right now. You know what I mean? I so, know what that's about. Yeah, I know you do. So yeah. So I'm like stupid busy. I mean, I'm like day eight of working straight and I don't get a day off until Sunday. And who are you working for now? I work for Harm Reduction Coalition in San Diego. And what are you guys doing now? Like what's your day to day at Harm Reduction? Uh, I mean, so I may, I help manage the, um, a BIPOC grant and the primary uh population for that is the uh, in, in indigenous population so i'm helping like set up uh like capacity growing and meeting with people and like going out to the res and like what resources do you need okay we can make this happen we have four naloxone and fentanyl test strip uh vending machines on reservations and um i do like i just spent the weekend at pachanga for boys with braids conference and just took naloxone there and Fentanyl test strips and like talked about you know like what we offer what we can do how we can help um you know and our our trainings are like culturally competent so they yeah. talk about like the western medicine side of it and but it also has like that culturally competent piece where like we have our like um and uh indigenous liaison like use like their practices as well like incorporated into so like their medicine is incorporated into it as well and since like we're gonna we have a whole new audience of people We've probably never seen the 149 person episode. Um, can you share with us what inspired you to get into harm reduction, um, specifically distributing Narcan? Yeah, so I was in um, I was in like one of the upteenth sober livings that I had been in, and um, it was me and two other guys. They were both like gang affiliated, and we were both like me and the other dudes were getting high, right? And so it was like march madness so like ncaa tournaments going on and i hear somebody come home so i go up downstairs to see like who it is or whatever say what's up and i find dude in the bathroom like overdose he just shot dope and um he, i think he shot like 0.5 he thought it was just heroin but it had fentanyl in it right and uh so i was like yo um i have drugs on me you're a gang member right he had just done a bit in prison too so i really didn't know like if he like the cops came and like shit went down if he would go back so i was like all right i don't want to be a snitch either like if we get arrested and i go in they're like oh this dude right. snitched on him and i have to deal with like all that bullshit right and i almost let him die i almost walked out and so i like had this decision to make like am i okay with like acting like i didn't find him and walking out this door and letting him die am i okay with like the what happens after that or Am I more okay with like calling nine one one and just like that whatever happens with that? And so ultimately, I called like nine one one and because there's no Narcan in the house, right? right? There's no naloxone in the house. The dispatcher had like no idea what to do. And then um, I like hid my drugs, took the point, like broke the tip, 
threw it away, hit it, and then like took his drugs and got rid of them. And right. then he like lived. But I was like, yo, how many people does this happen to that's in this situation? You know what I mean? Like that's like super fucked up. There's one thing I want to state to anybody watching right now that if you've never been to jail or prison and you call the police, you're a okay. So if you're not from the world of that thing, because th this seems like a misconception, right? Right. Of some people are like, oh, I'm a snitch now. If you've not, dude, if you're a civilian that lives in the regular world, I consider myself now. I don't know if it even resets, but if it doesn't, I guess I'm fucked. Right. If I ever go back to jail or prison. But before I started going and living a life of a convict, which is like, in my opinion, it was a kid who just like did too much drugs and I boosted the fuck out of anything that wasn't nailed down in a store. But like, if you're not that person, um, sometimes you don't really have to worry about being that the narc. But I know when you're in, and that's the thing too that I thought was really cool about, like, I mean, cause you, did you, have you been arrested though? No, I never got caught up. But the thing about it is too, is sometimes we go into these facilities, you know what I mean? And then it's like you, you live in that, remember how we did the, it's justice impacted. Yeah. Cause now you start living by a set of rules yeah. that might not actually be your set of rules that you have to live by, but you go into those situations and you know what I mean? Would you highly suggest if you see someone overdosing, they should probably, like what you did. Cause yeah. you're like, I'm going to throw it on the line. Maybe motherfuckers are going to call me a narc, but like this guy could die. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like just as a little like to the, you know, the people who are like, I don't want to be a narc. Like you're good. Yeah. Like, I, you know, I mean, like now that I'm older. Yeah, we're you, older. Yeah, so you're yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like and looking back at it. And yeah. Like, you know, I had no, I, I mean, I was never a gang member, but right. I just sold drugs. And, like, there was, like, obviously do's and don'ts there. Yeah. But, like, I didn't know gang politics, you know, right, I mean, right, all yeah. that. So I was like, wait, 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 what does this look like for them? Because, well, you go you, into those yeah. sober livings and all the yeah. guys there are Southsiders, which we've all been in that thing. And yeah. you know, now you're like, oh, I'm living by this the, the code of fucking prison. <laughs> and I'm just, like, some fucking kid from Burbank who, like, stole too many razors. And, like, I've been to county jail too much now. Yeah. So, yeah, you should, I mean... Like, like the law, the law varies state to state. You know yeah. what I mean? With like what happens, like some states you're not protected. Like, you know what I mean? Straight up, like they'll take your ass to jail. So what I tell people and like some probation offices, offices here have to have been like, yeah, we're not violating people for it. Like, even if you're like fourth wavered, you know what I mean? Right. But I take that with a grain of salt. Right. But, I, and, but, um, you know, if you're like fourth waiver, I tell them like, yo, like call, like dose them. Like, but whenever you're, if you feel like you've got to leave and like you need to leave, like just fucking leave because you shouldn't, right. you shouldn't go to jail or be violated or get fucked off because like you're trying to do the right thing. You right. know what I mean? So, and I get why they do it. You know what I mean? And, and like, honestly, like the good Samaritan law, like in every state, I think Maine, the Maine has the best one, the most protective one. Like it's at par to my knowledge. But they could amend that law so easily and quickly, and like it would just cut that bullshit out. Like, right, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, it's unnecessary. Like, why should this person go to jail because like they're using? You know what I mean? Like, that's fucked up. Definitely. And uh, how would you define harm reduction to someone unfamiliar with the term? I mean, we might ask a lot of the same questions, yeah. but the the audience is bigger now, yeah, and yeah, it's more yeah, diverse. Yeah. No, so, yeah. it's okay. Right. No, no, no. It's like so. I mean, not my. I mean, it's just a set of strategies that uh, that are aimed at like reducing the harms of drug use, whether wherever you fall on the spectrum. That could be like a weekend warrior to going out to the bars and doing like coke or ketamine. That could be someone that's like chaotically using drugs. Right. So it's just like basic practices, like very common sense for the most part, that can like help alleviate like some bad things that come from drug use and like help you have a healthier, wholesome life. How do you think like the uh, harm re harm reduction strategies like Narcan distribution uh, impact the community? I mean, it definitely. I mean, it saves lives. I mean, there's no doubt about it. I mean, it's uh, it saves lives. I mean, people are alive. They're breathing again. You know, they're not dead. So I mean, um, it. I think uh, for me, you know, like when when I was going through it, I was like, damn, I should probably like figure some stuff out. You know what I mean? And some people aren't there. Some people like. Yo, yeah, they'll go overdose like twenty more times and, right. and get their shit together. Um, and, and and like for people, like recovery is not the goal of harm reduction. It's just not. It's yeah. it's not a deliverable of it. It's literally like nowhere in there. But it happens a lot of times because of it. It's like three to five times more likely to like go to treatment, and stop using all drugs. Um, 
but yeah, it's definitely made a positive impact, but there's like so much stuff that like people don't know about, like, you know, like access to naloxone. Like that shit used to be illegal. Like Dan Biggs got arrested for that shit, dude. Right. Like he was just like illegally giving it out and like sourcing it illegally and like, yeah, he got arrested for it. Right. It wasn't always this way. You can grab this thing and move it if you oh, need it. If okay. you want to come more this way or this way. Yeah. Um. Yeah, you know, it's interesting too because I just like, somebody kind of really went in on me with, with the heart. You know how they do. Like oh, if bro. you're, yeah, yeah, yeah you, always, I, obviously yeah. you know. Yeah. So, um, I got in the argument. This, this, I think it was like, I know I reiterated it to my brother-in-law this weekend, but I think it was two weekends ago about harm reduction. And so, uh, the first time that I ever did a, a powdery white substance, and, and I just want to let people know too that it's this easy to just be done. So, the first time I ever did a powdery white substance at a party, not knowing what it was is these guys had a big thing of ketamine out. And I didn't know what ketamine was at the time. I just had seen cocaine. So these guys had a big thing of ketamine out, and people were casually going up and doing bumps and walking away from it. And I'm like, you got to be fucking kidding me. They're right. just leaving the free cocaine right there? So I literally like took it and just... into a line and just... the whole thing. Now imagine if that's today, because I'm just trying to party. You know what I mean? And that was fucking fentanyl, you know, what I mean? or there's some tr amount of fentanyl in that, you know, because I, mean? I had no clue what that powder was. And I always stress to people we were in a different time. You know what I mean? We had access to just let's just go do a bump of this. Let's just try to take that pill. Let's try to take, you know what I mean? And they don't have the luxury these days of just being able to sample drugs throughout the party. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I was like, in that time that I did it. I did that big line of ketamine. I walked outside. I fell into a uh, thing of cactus. And then I was telling everyone to taste my misery. Taste my misery. And I think it was from like Aqua Teen Hunger Force and it like had gotten in my, I forget. You maybe just kept meatball replaying said it in your yeah. head or something like that. Just yeah. <laughs> and I was like in a K-hole rolling in cactus. You know what I mean? And I'm like, wow, like I'm so lucky that that was like the worst that happened that night. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. But, um, yeah, so, I mean, it's just, like, it's really changed, you know what I mean? Um, can you walk us through the steps of what you would do in an overdose situation, including how to administer the Narcan for someone who doesn't know? Yeah, so, I mean, the first thing that I do is, like, yo, I just don't want to be slamming, like, Narcan up somebody's nose that's right. just, like, asleep or whatever, just drunk or faded. I almost did that. Last yeah, it's weekend. not good. People wonder, like, people are like, oh, they get mad. I'm like, well, did they really overdose? Did you just, like, slam? You know what I mean? Yeah, so, the guy was you, drunk. I was going to throw it in his nose. Yeah, like, no, nah, don't do that. So, I mean, you can just say something like, if I see somebody and it's concerning, I mean, I'm really good at, like, looking at somebody and, like, watching their chest rise and fall, right? Because I used to have to, like, do that at night at a detox. I yeah. was, like, the night technician. So we'd have to go in there, like, and, like, look and see how many respirations and, like, count them. Yeah. So I'll do that, and then, like, if I see, like, things that are concerning, you know what I mean? I'll be like, yo, the cops are coming, or security's coming to, like, kick your ass out, or, like, you know what I mean? Just yeah. make up some shit. If they don't respond to that, um, I'm going to give them a sternum rub, which is just, like, knuckles into the chest, and, and they're, or you can pinch, like, the, the trap muscle right there. Just enough stimulation to see, like, if they'll respond to you. And if that don't work, you want to lay them flat on their back. Um, you want to tilt their head up at like a 45 degree angle. And then you can just be like, and then before you actually do it, I'm like, hey, like I'm about to narc in you. Sometimes right. if people are just like, hi, you know what I mean? Like they'll respond to that. Like right. That. And uh, so after I do that, you so you hold it like that on your, on your index finger uh, and your middle finger, right? And so you want to stick it in the nose to where these two fingers touch the nostril and that's far enough. And you push the plunger in, you'll hear it make like a pop sound, like a, right. And that's one dose. Um, and then ideally after that, you would want to rescue breathe for two to three minutes and rescue breathing. And also at that point, like call nine one one, put it on speaker. Don't tell them it's an overdose because they'll take longer to get there. You just tell them unresponsive, and they'll probably keep like digging. You know what I mean? But just don't answer yeah. their questions. Just tell them like, whatever. And um, and wrestle rescue breathing obviously you want to have a barrier if you can so like a t-shirt a styrofoam cup can work you can poke holes in it a bandana like a surgical mask all those are like sufficient barriers and you want to uh, tilt the head at a 45 degree angle make sure nothing's in their mouth that could obstruct the airway uh pinch the nose shut and you want to give one breath 
every five seconds, like just a normal breath, and you want to make sure their chest is rising and falling. And if it's if the stomach's rising and falling, uh, you want to tilt their head back just a little bit more. And if there's no response in two to three minutes, you dose the opposite nostril and just repeat. And once they start coming to, you put them in the recovery position, tell them to give them Narcan, they might be in withdrawal. Yeah. Yeah, the guy that I that the guy that I ran to my car to get Narcan with, and I was like, I mean, I was excited to use it that day, and almost as I was running the car, I was like, I can't wait to call Nate and tell him right after this how I like saved someone's life, but he was drunk. Yeah, I mean that happens. Right? You got to make sure you know, that's how you piss people off against yeah. one guy. You got to make sure they're right. Yeah. He was like completely unresponsive in the yeah. bathroom when I went to go run to my car. Yeah. And then I think once they, like, threw water on him and, did, like, in the, like, two minutes, he's, like, all up, up like, no, nah, I just drank this bottle. I was, like, fuck. Yeah. Right, whatever. Yeah. Dude, one of these days, I'll have a good story for you. Okay. I mean, we have good stories of people, who, like, the, the distribution of it. I'm sure, yeah. I mean, even you, like, even, even here at NoHo, like, making it accessible, there's so many... You know what I mean? Like, yeah. there's a, so many lives that have been saved because all of the kids have it in their cars on them just from you leaving it here. Yeah, so it's like you know what I mean. It's like you hear ripples of effects of of what it does to. And I like how you always say it because it's like it gives you you can't recover if you're dead. Yeah, you know what I mean. And uh, and to be honest with you, it's like if I was playing Russian roulette with. Oh, yeah, go for it. Okay. I don't know how that works if on, like, any of the platforms care, but you can go ahead. Right. Um, it It's a... Uh, so, I don't know... You know what I mean? Like, um, I don't know what it would be like if someone was telling me at the time, you're literally playing Russian roulette with your life. Because I would just do the most drugs I could possibly get my hand on in a day. And I would put heroin in the spoon and cocaine in the spoon. I remember one time I got my hand on liquid Valium, so I threw that in the spoon. You know what I mean? Like, I'm taking the Zannies with it. Um, one of my friends started selling GHB, so boom, we threw GHB into the mix. Like, towards the end, when I was, like, using, I mean, that was like a death sentence. When I was doing it, I was kind of like, oh, no, I just need, I need this. Like, I have to shoot heroin so I can stop shaking or stop being sick so I can drink. And then like I'm going to like smoke crack and shoot Coke, but then I'm going to be too high. So I'm going to take Xanax and then I'm going to do more meth. And then I'm going to go hit my freaking bong because I can't actually get a shot really. And they coagulate. You know what I mean? So like the amount of drugs in retrospect that I did to like work, like to start my day was like insane. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know what I would do if it was really like <laughs> we're spinning, you know, because I mean? you don't know now. Like, yeah. it, I think it's the closest thing is like Russian roulette would be right with the fentanyl. Yeah, it really just, I mean, like uh, fentanyl coming into contact with like other drugs. I think it's really exacerbated in the media. Like it does happen, but it doesn't happen like they say it happens. Right. I mean, like, yo, when we test drugs, like there's a saying that like meth is meth. So when we see meth on like. The spectrometer, you know, you know the machine I showed you, the yeah. FDI, where it shows you like what it is, and right. like, like the cutting or whatever. Like we, it's mainly just meth, but you know, it doesn't really happen that a lot. Like with ketamine, like it's very, very rare. With like MDMA, like yo, know, with like MDMA, you're more likely to come into like some other like synthetically manufactured like stimulant that yeah. you're like gonna over amp on, like have a heart attack or some shit like that, you know. Um, yeah, so but cross contamination does happen, but mainly it's just like the dosing so off, or like so, you know, say I'm like, say I have like, say I'm like dependent on it, right? And yeah. like I go, I get arrested, or like even when cops like do busts and shit, like there's like direct evidence of like overdoses increasing in like a spatial parameter for up to like so many days after they make a bust because people like get dope sick and they have to go somewhere else and then they like trying a new supply they do the same amount of of, of what they pre were previously doing yeah and then they overdose and die so there's like direct evidence leading like drug busts to people overdosing more see and that's the thing though too is like what about this i don't because i don't know a lot about so like i remember i had my guy i had freaking jose i had you know what i mean like i had my guys you know what i mean but then every once in a while like someone comes over and he's like oh i'm selling I'm like, oh yeah, give me some. Like, how often is it happening when people are just like going supplier shopping? You know what I mean? Like, hey, just whoever. Like, 
if I just some days I'll just go downtown and I'm like whoever has the first balloon, I'm buying that. Mm-hmm. Like, is there a difference in dosage when that's happening? Like, say, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, I would say you're shopping suppliers. Yeah, is, that, I, is this a, could this be something that could be unsafe? Like, I'm doing Jose's dope. I'm shooting a gram. Yeah, but now I went to downtown. And I know I'm going to get, like, 13 balloons to do what his does. So, like, is there yeah, any that's, risk? That, yeah, there's, that's definitely. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, in, in, in retrospect, like, I mean, using drugs from a, like, toxic, from a, like, unregulated supply has its risk, like, off rip. You know right. what I mean? So, yeah, I mean, that's definitely, yeah, if you're, like, shopping around and stuff like that, for sure, it's going to run the risk of it. If you run into something that could potentially be stronger and... You know, with like that drug, there's just a small margin of error. You know right. what I mean? Yeah, that's like with me the the main. I mean, I just I'm glad that I didn't really have to coming up on seven years. You know what I mean? So I don't know how long it's been like this big thing, but I just don't remember. Like when I was towards the end of my using, I was like I was a black tar heroin guy. Anyways, I just that's what I liked. I don't remember it coming around. Did I like miss it? Nah, dude. I mean, I, I mean, yeah, it was, it was. I mean, it's, uh, fentanyl's been in the drug supply since like we, we first detected it in 1969 in Orange County, but it just wasn't really prevalent. And I mean, California. I mean, the West Coast pretty much like black tar and just like heroin in general like held its weight until like COVID, and then like the supply like completely switched, and then that's right. when everything got fucked out here during COVID. During COVID, okay. yeah. So I did. I did fucking miss the train. Um also, too, so, like, I mean, a lot of people, so, like, anyone following you, because um, you exploded on to social media. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, like, you were doing the work a long time. Yeah. I've been I, doing the work for, like, almost three years, I think, when I started, like, actually doing social media. Something right. Like that. And how has that changed the work? Oh, dude, I'm so fucking busy. Right. Yeah, I was just... uh. I mean, social media is like a full time job. I mean, it's a lot of connections, a lot of like, I mean, I mail out like shit from my house like every day of the week almost. You know right. what I mean? I mail, I told you earlier, I think that I mailed out 100,000 test strips in like three months. Like just me packing shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just me. And uh, so, yeah, it like keeps me busy. And there's just like a lot of educational stuff and like talking about like, you know, like myths and like things that as- exacerbate the issues in like our country and, um a lot of concerts and stuff like that just events or tabling or like you know i got like i think i got like 10 maybe 12 businesses that like you know that i'll take narcan and test trips to and like you know everything that comes with it and they like just give it to their clients or whatever yeah. that come through so there's that and just you know i mean i kind of got the opportunity to go to mexico through social media as well how'd you get into the social media game oh you no. <laughs> you you and fucking jordan were like you i think you were like when I, well when we when i met you at showers you're like bro you gotta do social media and i was like bro i have no idea how the fuck to do social media and you like made me do a real and you were like this is when you were like bro you gotta do real you gotta do real you gotta do a real day real day real day real day yeah and then like you and you and jordan and then i remember jordan like texted me like after we had started doing stuff and we filmed some stuff you know what i mean like with tin lambesis and we were doing like other little things and yeah i think that's right when you were like trying to do a podcast you know what i mean like right. you were like the I, the vision was there and jordan would be like bro you gotta like just post your story and you know put your face on the camera and talk about like um like who you are and what you do and i was still like for one like being on camera putting your face out you know what i mean is not easy in general public speaking is not easy and then talking about this subject matter is not easy. It's right. very controversial and political and like, you know, whatever. And then my teeth were still fucked up. Then I hadn't fixed my teeth yet either. So I was like super like fucked off with that too. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and, uh, but I just fucking did it. And it just like, and then I just started figuring out, like, I really didn't do anything crazy, bro. I just like talked about shit and put my face on there. And that was just like it. And then I just, I don't know. I just did the work and like kind of documented it. You know what I mean? Right. And people thought it was fucking cool. How do you feel about, like, I mean, what about, like, just uh, the social media robbing you of your mental health? Oh, dude, it's so bad because I'm, like, dude, I will fucking argue with people. Yeah, you will. I'm so fucking petty, dog. Like, it's so bad. Like, dude, I I mean, 
I'll literally like get caught up in it sometimes and I'll just be talking shit to somebody for like eight hours. Dude. You know what I mean? Right. I'm so bad. Like every chance I get, like get a break, I'll just like say something. You know what I mean? Right. And uh, yeah, it's toxic. You know what I mean? And sometimes it's my fault for engaging. I don't know when to like disengage, but it's just, I'm like a, I'm like a, I don't know, like a little kid that just wants to get the last fucking word in, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah. But it's just like, it's just like passion coming out of me, you know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, like, I don't know. I mean, I definitely, like, I'm not talking out of my ass either. Like everything I say, I can back it up. Right. You know, and um, with in multiple ways. But yeah, it's like extremely toxic. But a lot of times, like, I laugh at it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I just laugh at people. It's just like, whatever. Cause, like, this and is, some people want to meet up and just fight. Nah, n- nah. Nothing? No nah. one. Nah. No one really does. No, I don't think so, bro. Because I've seen people that have like talked shit to me online, and they've seen me in person. And I'm not I'm, like a bad dude or anything, right. you know what I mean? But it's, it, they've never tried to fight me. It's crazy too about how they will act behind the screen, huh? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy because I don't mean, mm, yeah, I don't think, yeah, people just be talking reckless. You know what I mean? Right. And, and like, I don't know, bro. Like, I mean, I've pulled up to places where, like, people don't like me and no one's ever, like, tried anything. And I'm not saying I'm intimidating or a bad dude or a badass or a fighter, but it's right. never happened. And I'll I go, to, I, go I, down in one hit at this point. Yeah. Someone yeah. can call me a bitch on the internet or whatever. They, I'm going down, straight down. Yeah. I'm not trying to mess up my teeth either. Oh, I know, dude. I think it about... It way too yeah, That's think, the first thing I think about any yeah. time. I'm just like, dude, if someone, like, came at me, I'll, like, pretend take a hit and just... Oh, yeah, just like just flop like an NBA player. People get crazy with me since I started doing the spilling the game of the merchandising industry. Oh, I bet. Oh, they're like, oh, this fool. Yeah, yeah they're, they're, they're like, all mad and stuff. That's how my family eats the next time I see you in downtown LA, bro. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. some guys threatened us before when we were filming. Um, I thought they were going to take Marcelo's camera. So that no, was the, yeah. No way. And I, because then I'm just like, dude, Marcelo, like, put the camera down. Like, Cause I couldn't afford to replace that camera. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. So, but yeah, I think it's a lot of just real big when you're just texting with your your profile, no picture. Yeah, those guys are the 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 gnarliest. Oh yeah, dude, they're like. Once you see those guys, and and they'll probably beat us up, huh? Yeah, we'll just never know. No, dude, yeah, you'll never. Just see the no kid. picture yeah. guy just goes the hardest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you, one follower, you'll never see them coming. You don't know what they look like. Right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, people. I don't know, bro. I mean, like, I definitely like have said some things like to people, but you know, whatever. But I don't. I've never like been like I'm gonna beat you up when I see you. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. But I've had people like tell me I'm a communist or like. No, I've seen they go. Some people go crazy on you. Yeah, and then people take such a strong stance against it. See the one, the ones that really get that get me are the ones like with long term sobriety. Yeah, and I'll even go to say like three years. Yeah, and it's like, dude, like, like you're alive and like, don't you want to give the other people a chance to live? You know what I mean? I'm just like. Yeah. When did the disconnect of like you were like the street urchin to now you get to decide when people live and die? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, that, yeah. Those are the ones like not even like taking into consideration that this could you know save lives. You like look at it this way of like just giving out fucking free pop. Like they get stuck on this guy's giving out fucking crack pipes. It's like no, bro. He's giving out an oil burner that's used for smoking meth. Yeah, they don't even know what you don't it's even for. Know, yeah, dude. They don't even know what it's for. And like, bro, like, like, shut the fuck up. Yeah, most people, like, bro, I, most people ain't smoking crack. Like, like dude, yeah. motherfuckers have been passing out needles. Like, what? Yeah, it's just crazy because people, like, get, they get into recovery and they just get, like, holier than thou and, like, self righteous. You know what I mean? And, and they, like, a lot of them, but like, start licking like cops' boots and shit like that. Right. And I'm like, bro, what? Like, how do you? And what? Whatever. But it's just like, did, did you forget like where you come from? You know what yeah. I mean? Because I've never forgot where I come from. Me neither. And it's just like, you, you know, like, and some people get mad that like recovery is not like a deliverable of harm reduction, but they also don't know that like a lot of times because of like access to services and people like just treating them with integrity and as a human, that those people end up and like recovery of some form or like and quit eventually quit using substances you know what i mean and it's just like i can't speak for everybody else but like i wasn't a one-time wonder you know right, what yeah, i mean me i've like fucked i've fucked off so many times dude you know and uh 
I know that I'd yeah. be one of those guys that was probably being narcaned like once a week if if I was out there using still. Yeah. I'd probably be, you know what I mean? Like yeah, I just I know if I was still out there, I mean, chances are I'd probably be fucking dead. You know what I mean? Just cuz like if I was I just couldn't imagine. But yeah, you know, I that shit's crazy. How do you... Because I remember, too. So I don't know if you remember, but, like... And I've told you this before. I saw you in AA meetings mm-hmm. standing up as Narcan Nate before mm-hmm. you showed up. But I also remember the backlash towards it big time in the beginning mm-hmm. of what you were doing. Yeah. Like, almost people are like, you don't belong in this meeting. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, now, I see in the non-AA announcements, it's pretty par for the course at a majority of meetings now. Especially, like, where we're at. Yeah, I mean, I think... I don't know if they do it at the AA meetings around here. Mm, they might. I mean, I know some people that... I mean, I know they they narcan someone at an AA meeting, like, not too... I mean, it's like a year ago, but I don't know if they... I mean, I'll tell you this, like, there's like seven HA meetings that, like, give out Narcan and yeah. test trips because I supply it, you know what I mean? Um, How did you feel then when, like... Oh, dude, you're, like, I, going to dude meet- I almost whooped this old dude's ass. Yeah, because you're, like, going to meetings to, like, get recovery. And I remember, too, people were like, that's outside. What do they call it? Oh, is it, like, that's outside issue or something yeah, like that? Yeah, like, oh, no, like, I, I, I remember seeing you stand up. And then, two people just being like, oh, this fucking, like, you're like, hey, did you, you said Narcan Nate always. Uh, what did I say? I know it's Smitty. No, no, I would introduce myself as Smitty. But Smitty, then, okay, yeah. But then the people in the crowd, because it just, like, became a thing, like, dude, it, like, immediately stuck in people. It was Smitty. It yeah, was Smitty. Yeah, so yeah I, you'd introduce Smitty. Yeah, uh, and then people would be like, and then they'd be like, you know how like they go and they say your name, they would just call me Narcan Nate. Like, right. they wouldn't call me Smitty, it was just Narcan Nate, and they would get all pissed about it and shit. And, uh, I mean, but, like, you, you, how do you, I mean, dude, because that, do you remember, like, uh, uh, Kanye West is like, I don't know what I'll hear from the Christians when oh, he did yeah. the Jesus King album? Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember, like, going into the meetings over there, and I, I know exactly where. It was in Oceanside, right near the Dunkin' Donuts at that meeting, the yeah, new one. Yeah, And them being, like, so appalled. And I'm just like, where the fuck are we right now? Yeah. Like, how is that? I don't think you missed a beat. No, I'm like making sure that you're there for the people. Oh yeah, dude, I kept showing up, and I mean, I would even like, uh, there's like a huge like uh, unhouse camp over there, you know what I mean? Right. So I'd go give it out over there. But yeah, they would like talk shit to me. But like the thing about it is, is like I had worked the traditions, you know what I yeah. mean? And like I know how like the inner workings of it were. So I'd just be like, yo, if you don't want me to make this announcement, you got to take out outside announcements out for everybody, and you got to have a steering committee. You can't just tell me what I can and cannot do. Like you have to go through this process. Right. So if you want to do that, that's fine. But if I can't talk about like Narcan and having it, humbly over here can't talk about Domino's being hiring. You know what I mean? Right. So like you got to cut it out for everybody. And I mean, yeah, it was just like I just I knew it was ignorance and they were uneducated, and it was annoying. But I mean, like. I think it was like two years ago. Like I almost fought this old ass dude at this meeting. Right. But I was like already pissed off at his wife. And then like, then he's like tried to like, he had like 25 years and was like a part of like everything. And he tried to like big dick me. And I was like, no, dude, I'll fucking whip your ass right now. Right. How has that affected like, and you don't have to answer this, but going into those places, has that affected now you being able to like feel a part of? Oh, like all, dude, since then, because I know it's yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I really don't even like going to meetings anymore, dude. To be honest with you, and I mean, I haven't stayed sober since then either. You know what I mean? Which, for better or worse, uh, uh, yeah. It's just like, dude. I just like, yeah. Usually, I go into meetings, dude, and I just like leave angrier than what I was. You right. know what I mean? I went to, I went to one like, oh, like two weeks ago, and they're immediately like talking. When about I was there. It. No, 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 no. This was in, this was an in Encinitas. I went to one, and this fool was like, "Oh, if you're on fucking methadone and Suboxone, like you're not sober," and blah 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 blah. I'm like, "Dude, this fool's whack as fuck." Like, right. what the fuck? And so I just like, yeah, I just left and went and did my own thing. I was like, "Fuck that shit," you know what I mean? I'm like, "Who the fuck are you? Like, holier than thou?" You know yeah. what I mean? Like, hundred thousand people are dying, and you're like, and also you're not a doctor, so I'm like, and it says that in the book, yo. Yeah, so See, and that's the reason too, and I, and dude, I'll I'll be the first to admit, since Zoom has come around, I've been laxidocious 
about going to in-person meetings. Dude, did you did you read that on like the word for the day, like dictionary? <laughs> did you read that word? <laughs> I've been waiting to use it. Oh, okay. So I'm Does right. that even fit how I used it? I don't, dude. Like, I, I've just not been going as much as. I see dude, I, broken see, English. The dog. thing about it, though, the thing first. about it is, I should really fucking be in these rooms. Yeah. But that's why I've also made a point into to to, because I'm one to say this. Since I've moved to San Diego, I'm like, these meetings suck. Oh, yeah. The meetings are totally different than L.A., dude. Like, but, like, totally. Dude, I'm, you know, I, I might be the one who sucks for not going over there and, and sharing my experience, strength, and hope. Yeah. I might be the one who's the total shitbag. And it's literally something that I work on because I'm so dialed in with my men's meeting. Yeah. I love it. It's great. It's solution, but you know what I mean? It's all the things that I need, but like, you know, in this work that I do, I need to be there for people, you know what I mean? Yeah. That are like me. And that's, that's a thing too with like that Saturday meeting. I'm a, I was out of town this weekend, but I'm like, I literally need to make a point to be in these meetings as a sober member of the 12 step area that I, you know what I mean? The, the meetings I go to yeah. and like carry the message. And I got to be that guy who is like, dude, if you're not boxing and you say you're sober, great. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like, what? I, cause, cause to be honest with you, I went to meetings and I was fucking loaded and this and sober and like not working the steps. I remember this one time I took like a fucking cake and I was like, I think I was already shooting coke again. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I, like, never worked the steps, dude, but, like, I'll fuck with that guy. Yeah. I'll fuck with yeah. the guy who's, like, I'm on Suboxone. And, and this is what I say, though, to people. You know what I mean? If, if you are on it. Like, I'm here for you, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? If, if this is where you're at, I'm here for you. The thing about it is, this is the thing, is I only know how to walk you through the steps completely sober so i don't know the thing about it when someone's on those thing on other things dude great if, if this sobriety is working for you it's amazing dude i'm not the guy but i'm here for you mm -hmm. let me just everything that i have that i can give you i will but the thing that i've learned about now coming up on around i'm, I'm gonna have seven years in july 14th is that I've gone all these years without taking a break from the feelings. So, I mean, sometimes, you know what I mean? If, if you feel like Suboxone is this, you're, it's your even... Because I'm not going to tell you to not take psych meds. Yeah. I'm not a doctor. Right. You know what I mean? It's just, it's just I don't know how to... I was like, I've only done the steps the one way. Yeah. And But, I, but I've been on psych meds. So when people are like, oh, I'm on psych meds and I'm sober and I'm in AA, I'm like... Let's go. Yeah. I know how yeah. to work with you there. But the thing about with people taking uh, the, you know, Suboxone or any other meds that like kind of, you know, like some people, they're, um, they're like, I'm prescribed Xanax. I'm prescribed this. I'm like, yeah, it's, it's good, but I don't know. You know what I mean? I don't know. Like, because I haven't taken something. I've taken, I've been on uh, Seroquel and Wellbutrin. You know what I mean? I've to like re, in the beginning of my sobriety and after my Grandma died, Chris from here when he passed away. Yeah. And then Marty, you know what I mean? These were like hard losses for me to to deal with. You know what I mean? And I was going off the hinges. Like, I'm not sleeping. I'm depressed. I'm laying in my bed. I'm not going to the gym. Like now I've changed. And it's going for the worse. And I'm going back to that. Mm -hmm. I'm a little suicidal. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like now the 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 thoughts of like, what if I just died? start came coming back in and luckily too at the time that i was like sober enough and like had enough of this in me to i was like i should probably see a psych and i remember telling like this the school at miracosta i'm like do we have like therapy or someone that i can talk to because i'm like severely depressed mm -hmm. and i don't know what to do and luckily through the program of alcoholics Anonymous, which i do i i learned to kind of reach out and look for those extra help you know what i mean and i and people too who are like if you're not being able to get sober in these programs and maybe you know some people said some fucked up shit and they're a representation of this room i think that this program is all about love 
You know what I mean? At the end of the day, and and the 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 steps that I did got me closer to God. You know, it got in my own understanding. Yeah. Which makes it easier because I mean now I just answer to this guy. Yeah. It's all powerful. It's bigger than my problems, guy. You know what I mean? But like outside help, dude, I still go to therapy every week. It just worked, and I kept it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, but dude, I mean, if sobriety is like something that that you want to do or someone watching if that meeting if they don't work something will if it's what you want to do yeah yeah you know what i, I mean yeah. and and that's what i'm saying too with me like i need to fucking be in those rooms to be the brandon of aa to where you know the anyone who feels like cuz these guys say that i'm not this like you know what i mean i'm just like dude if you're here like your seat is here like yeah. this, these seats are for you. They are for the person who can't. You know what I mean? Like, like it's it, it's fucked up. Yeah, it's fucked up that some people can ruin the experience. But I mean, I know there's a lot of people that didn't want me around because of my track record. I was a total shitbag, just like fucking raging here in LA, and and a lot of people that didn't trust that I'd stay sober. Right. And there's some people I'm still that are just like. I'm sure they're like, this guy is fucking full of shit. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. fuck this kid. But it's like, whatever. Like, I have a great life. It's amazing. It's beautiful. It's full of love and family. And 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 luckily, like, by doing what we were taught in those rooms, like, I've gotten this really, really, like, deep connection with a power greater than myself. You know what I mean? Good things. Good things. And I should be the guy to fucking be there for the people, you know? Can't be hiding on Zoom. I got to get out there. Yeah, yeah. So let me back. Let's backtrack. I want yeah. to. I want to make a point. So like, with the suboxone thing or the methadone thing, like, if that's a life saving medication, right? Sure. So, so there's so there's data out there showing that like with with OUD opioid use disorder, that abstinence based treatment alone for them is as deadly as no treatment at all. And, you know, it's like the gold standard for treatment with people with OUD, right? And so here's the thing. Here, like, here, here's, my, here's my issue with it. And this is, like, the point that I always like to make. So if you look at um, the definition of sober right. or clean in, like, you know, these 12-step programs, right? It's saying no use of any mood-changing, mind-altering substance, right? right? So... If you and if we go by the technicality, like if you go, if you use something more of the recommended daily intake, right? That's yeah. substance abuse, right? So if I'm drinking like three bangs a day, I'm using. Right. I'm abusing drugs. Caffeine's a psycho stimulant. It's yeah. a drug. It doesn't say if it gets chaotic. It says use of any mood changing, mind altering substance. And that's not my definition. That's not my semantics. That's the 12 steps, like that's their definitive term on it and their right. cement. That's not mine. I didn't make that up. And so, or if you're, you know, if you're, if you're using nicotine, right, it may not make your life chaotic, but you're still using a drug. Like, do you feel better in the morning when you have coffee? Do you feel uplifted and more ready to take the day? Yeah. Dude. Yeah. So. Especially after this one. Yeah. So exactly. So in technicality, like by their definitive term and their semantics, you're, if you used nicotine, if you drink energy drinks, if you're drinking espresso, if you use those drugs, right, you're engaging in recreational substance use, right? Right. But nobody's going to say anything about that because it's okay, right? Maybe but, even two, like, six donuts in a row. You, well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot of people go into AA and they're like, all right, I'm going to stop, I'm gonna gonna stop drinking, but I'm going to turn myself into a diabetic. But, but, but so you become a diabetic. So now I'm like, hey, fuck you for taking insulin, you piece of shit. Right. Yeah. yeah. You, you see what I'm saying? No, no, like, are you gonna, are, are sure. you gonna go tell a fucking diabetic to quit taking a medication that's saving their life? Like, it's their business. And like, I don't think, like, recovery. Like, okay, so it's it's a sub. But what what is recovery? Like, what is that? And so that's like, that's how you live your life. Like the changes right. that you make in your life. And so, if you're living your life, if you're if you're paying your bills, you're taking care of your kids, you're taking care of your significant other and doing the things that like you need to do to have a successful and filling life, that's recovery, right? Right. And so the whole semantics on that, just like, it's just so crazy because like, yo, nobody's gonna tell homie over here that's drink like six bangs and like cheapen their vape like the whole fucking time to go pick up a white chip, are they? No. 
but they're technically like engaging in recreational substance use and or abuse by technicality right but nobody's gonna say anything but like by god if you're on like suboxone or methadone like dude they're like fuck you get off your meds and then like people die that way you know what i mean so it's just and, and i would even go as far as to say like yo if you're on a doctor prescribed medication and you're taking it as prescribed compared to someone that's just like ripping their vape all fucking day like myself and drinking copious amounts of caffeine i would say yeah. this person over here the person on suboxone and methadone i would say that they're more sober than me right like straight up yeah i mean that's the thing too is i mean i i don't think i'd be able to just take suboxone as prescribed you know what i mean mm -hmm. But you can't. So that's but you can't project that though. A lot yeah, of people. Yeah, dude, a lot of people project that. And they're like, oh well, my experience. Okay, well you're like. There's a thing called the personal experience fallacy, where they think how they live their life and their experience is going to shape this yeah. person. And, and like, it's good. Like, okay, cool. But like, that's not always how it goes. You know what I mean? Like that person has to have their own experience. And like, like why would you fuck off somebody when you should just be supporting them? And like, if that works best for them, I don't give a fuck if they stay on it for the rest of their life. Like, am I going right. to tell someone on on blood pressure medicine like hey at some point you need to come off your blood pressure medicine and quit right. being a pussy yeah like what that makes yeah. does that mean you know what I, mean? I mean that's what i'm saying yeah. too like with my uh like when i because it, it was actually hard to go back on uh psych meds because yeah. i thought that it was like that i'd gotten sober enough yeah to never need it again oh you yeah. know what i mean so i thought that like oh you you've gotten sober enough to not need it again which made it really hard because it, it was an AA based like decision in my head. Yeah. In my head. In my own head, I'm like, you're stronger than this. Well, that's bullshit. But like, dude. when the <laughs> thoughts of like suicide come into my head, I'm like, this isn't, I have to preserve the life. You know what I mean? It, it, it actually, I'm like, I have a son. Yeah. And and I was like, so I went, you know what I mean? I just did what I knew. So it's like, you know, my sponsor's like, oh, I'm not a doctor. Yeah, like, it's, and it's then, crazy. And, and, yeah. And so he's like. That's just old programming. Talk, yeah, you talk to a doctor. And I'm like, yeah. okay. Yeah. Boom. So I went to, I didn't, I mean, I didn't even know. So I just thought a therapist was a psych doctor. Oh, yeah. No, you need a psych, yeah, nurse, so you like, need a psych nurse practitioner. Doctor. Right. So I went to, uh, I went to freaking, you know, Miracosta, and then they signed me up and then i was like telling him and he's like i really think you should see a psychiatrist and i'm like i thought yours you know what <laughs> I mean? yeah and then i talked to the lady and she's like dude i mean if you're not sleeping and you're staying up for three or four days like that's this is not good you know what i mean because i'm like so in my head and then you know the crazy thing about this last time was is okay getting back on it the sleep returned um, the mood stabilized, you know what I mean? And then what happened too, though, was the, it started being too much sleep. Yeah. But the medication did its job. Yeah. Like in a, in a 90 day period, the mood had changed. And then when I talked to her, I was like, Hey, you know what? Now it's like too much. We lowered the dose. You know what I mean? Until like the smallest dose. I'm like, yeah, it's still too much. I can't. My mind's not waking up how I want it to in the morning, but I feel good and I don't feel what I felt. You know what I mean? And then, yeah, eventually just boom, stop taking it, you know, like checked in with her a couple of weeks, still go with my regularly scheduled therapy and boom. You know what I mean? So like even like I say to like to rob someone of, of the experience that I had, cause like, yeah, I'm not a fucking doctor. Yeah. Like that's what I said. If you, if suboxone's your thing, like, dude, I'm, I'm here for you. Like, I don't know like i don't know me mm -hmm. but i'm here for you like dude you belong you like you know what i mean like the the Xan like so one of my sp sponsees with the xanax and mm -hmm. i was just like listen you are prescribed it but the way that you're like utilizing it to kind of check out from what you're feeling i was like that's where i think is a, uh, you know what i mean but the same thing i'm not a doctor Mm -hmm. You know, eventually the person just never finished the steps. But I mean, I didn't. I wasn't like, oh, I can't fuck with you. Yeah, yeah. I've like, never, don't uh, yeah. fucking call my phone yeah. anymore. Stop calling. Yeah. I'm just like, yeah, like, I, you know, I don't know. I, I was like, I just, you know, I didn't know. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't. Well, I mean, you know how I am. Like, I don't give a fuck what people do. You know what I mean? Like, right. I'm still gonna love you, like, regardless, and like, be there for you. How's it been? Like, uh, everything's good though. I mean, uh, I guess, dude. I mean, I'm, like, overworked, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I think, I mean, I quit 
so I quit drinking, you know what I mean? I'm like, I don't even know, dude. I'm like 80 days without drinking. Like, I'm going to some meetings now, but it's just like, it's hard for me to like get into it, dude. I'm going to be honest with you. You like, usually most meetings I go to, I'm like, I fucking hate all these people. And then right. I'm like mad. You know yeah. what I mean? And it's like, I didn't quit like drinking because it was chaotic. I just like honestly didn't. For one, I like, I didn't like the way it made me feel. And, and, uh, it was just like I also didn't like want to put on like weight because of it to be honest with you. Right. So it was like never like chaotic. And I, oh man, I did some. Oh, I'm not gonna say on here because it's a podcast. But I did some extra. I was just say extracurriculars. Right. You know what I'm saying? And like twice, and it was just like bad. It was just like not bad as an experience. It just like wasn't any good. Right. And um, so yeah, I, I mean, I don't. Know, I mean, I don't know what's gonna happen. You know what I mean? Um, I couldn't tell you. Um. But I mean, more so for me, like I'm trying to like tap into like some kind of spiritual practice, you know, I right. mean, I've been doing like a lot of like, um, practicing medicine with like indigenous practices and like getting back to my roots. I just found out like with the tribe that my mom's from is actually, so I've been like trying to tap into that and like research the history, you know what I mean? And like kind of do that and just, uh, you know, um, I don't know, just find my way. It's kind of like, it's real, it's real. Cause like I like the process of like working the steps, you know yeah. what I mean? Like that that was like very healing for me, and I learned a lot about myself. But uh, like with the meetings and stuff, like I just like people, you know, principles for personalities. But a lot of times I feel like that they say that to justify like people's bullshit and like let people get yeah. away with some f wild shit. And I have an issue with that, you know what I mean? And like I'm very like passionate about how I feel about things, and uh, but I'm not like it helps a lot of people, but you know what I mean. And I'm not dogging it, you know what I mean. It definitely played a role in my life. It's just hard for me to like engage in it and stuff like that. So I mean, like my main outlets like just going to the gym or just like what I don't know, just anything, right. you know. When I'm not working, it's like I find shit to do. It's but, interesting though, too. This this last time that I got sobriety, mm -hmm. I mean, every other time, I mean, I went to meetings, I hung out, like I loved hanging out. Yeah. I didn't do the steps much ever. Yeah. I mean, in this last time, a lot of the work was done. I mean, the meetings were one hour of the day. Right. And that's if, you know, and, and, and even this last time, I, I, in the beginning, I did the 90 and 90 days. But, like, I definitely consistently hit meetings, like, at least every week still. You know what I mean? Um, But, dude, a lot... The difference between now and every other time I got sober is, dude, a lot of the work I did was in the book. Yeah. I mean, this time I've done a lot of reading. I still, you know, like people are like, if I sponsor them, I mean, they have this idea, which in the beginning I'm like, oh, yeah, let's go work Coachella and this and that. Yeah, I brought everyone jobs. But they're like surprised, I think, when I'm like, all right, boom, let's open the book. Like, we're going to read. You know what I mean? And like, I just did a lot of deciphering of what that book meant and what it meant to my like sponsor and other people i respected but yeah i mean for me it was the best deal in town i'll always be there i think you're needed in the rooms you're very needed you know what i mean a lot more than than a lot of people just hanging out there yeah um how has your work in harm reduction distributing narcan affected your view on drug use and addiction Oh, uh, I mean, just, I mean, I guess the more you get involved, you know what I mean? The more you understand, like, like drug use and addiction and, like, societal and systemic issues and how it exacerbates, like, drug use. And uh, it's completely changed. I mean, I don't really, I don't really believe in, like, the addiction model, really. You yeah. know what I mean? I don't really believe in, like, once an addict, always an addict. Like, 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 like if I... If I was to go like and do some opioids right now, I probably I'd probably be bad. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. But like when I was drinking, like it was never bad. It was like not really for the most part. Um, but I don't like if we were to say that like your brain's always wired that way. That's saying that like neuroscience is like invalid. Like you can't rewire your brain. You know what I mean? So. But I don't think like one size fits all in that category. Like I think you can change your like relationship with substances in, right. in that sense. Um, but I mean, I definitely think like a, like addiction is a thing. I more so think it's a disorder. You know what I mean? Uh, more than like a disease model. I don't really believe in the disease model. 
Um, but I believe you can change like your relationships with substances and like, uh, and how you regard them and like use them and things like that. Like I know people that have had chaotic substance use disorder and like they were abstinent for long periods of time and have t returned to use and it's like never gotten chaotic. You know what I mean? I'm right. not saying that people should go do that. I'm not encouraging it. I'm just saying I have like a completely different view. Like for me, for me, like, uh, I don't want that personally. Like I'm like, I like to like be as healthy as possible. You know what I mean? And that's like pretty much why I stopped and I wanted to go like, I don't know. I was just like, uh, when I was just, uh, I was definitely happier when I was just like doing like things for like spirituality and things like that. And like overall, I just dealt with life a lot better. Right. You know what I mean? And like, um, and I know I'm not going to like, uh, you know like drinking or whatever is not gonna like help me it might help me cope or like put it like put it away for a little bit but it's not like dealing with life you know what i mean yeah and so yeah i just was like yeah i'm not gonna do this anymore and um but yeah it's de it's definitely opened my eyes to a lot of things i mean because I've, I've had a very fortunate like privilege to work with like a lot of people in this space that like um are in some like high places and i've like been blessed with like knowledge an understanding of like processes and like you know the bureaucracy of things the politics of things like how to do things how things work and you know so i've been like very very like educated on things like more than i ever have been right and what advice would you give to someone interested in getting involved in harm reduction or learning more about it i would say go volunteer for an org and get educated and like everything you think you know about like drug use and addiction i would say like you're probably gonna relearn it and it's gonna fuck you that's up. how it was fucking with you yeah well just it, it literally opened my mind to yeah it. well i remember when we first met like you were you were different than you are now yeah. but, but you weren't like un like intolerable you know what i mean but yeah you, i was you, more you, militant with the alcoholics yeah, anonymous thinking yeah. that it was the only yeah solution yeah and it, it has a part you know what i mean but it's not like I, I think it's like it's historically been like the end all be all but there's like yo like look at how look at the success rate when people use like uh psilocybin for like alcoholism you know what i mean And you also got to realize like a lot of these people like you know um it's it's a money thing too like a lot of this stuff's like cash cow so there's like what what's the word I'm looking for? There's like ulterior motives with right. like either making this happen or not making this happen with people. And like, my thing is, is I don't get paid for like 90% of the fucking shit I do. So I just want the best for people. And like, that's shown like throughout my time doing this shit. Like I have no like interest, like personal interest in this. And uh, what's your hope for the future of harm reduction, overdose prevention in your community and beyond? Yeah. I mean, I would like to see, a safe consumption site come to like San Diego and like even LA or like wherever, you know what I mean? I would like to see like is anyone even in the near top or is it's there... in talks. Yeah, it's in talks. Um, the last time the bill got sent to the governor's desk, uh, Gavin Newsom vetoed it so he could get like the red and purple vote because he had aspirations to run for president. And between that time, like between the time, the last time that bill was on the desk, like 10 to eight, I think it was like 10 to 18,000 people died in California from overdose. Wow. So I would like to see that. I would like to see healthcare reform happen. Um, I would like to see more increased access to mental health services. Like I would say like access to mental health services inside school systems, you know what I mean? For kids and teenagers and stuff like that. Um, I think kids should have access to like to, to Narcan, Naloxone and stuff like that. Um, and I think we should have a safe supply of drugs. Cause like the, the drug supply is what's killing people. We have an unregulated right. toxic drug supply. And the, the majority of people that use drugs don't end up with chaotic substance use disorder and like housing reform. Right. That's a big one. Yeah. Is there any message or key point you'd like to leave our audience with about the importance of Narcan and harm reduction? Yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, let me think here. I'm kind of burnt, dude. I'm like cooked. Um, I know you've been going a long time today already. Yeah. Um, I would say, I would say if you really like want to understand like addiction and like mental health, I think you have to dig into like societal and systemic issues of like why people use substances. And I said this earlier, but like, dude, there were so many times when I was like trying to get my life together that I would start working and I would like landed in this spot where I didn't make enough money to survive, but I made more money. I made like, how did I say this? I made an, 
I didn't make enough money to survive, but I made too much money to get any help. You know what I mean? And I was like, dude, why oh, yeah. the fuck? This is no way to live. And I was just like, I was just like, dude, this is fucked. You know what I mean? And so, and, and like, like, dude, like the median age of people, like people, so people think that people use drugs and, and end up homeless and that like for sure that happens, right? But the median age of people in like San Diego, like becoming homeless, you know what it is? What? 55. Wow. That's the median age. So like, yo, like if I end up on the streets, I'm smoking meth, yo, like, right. cause it's fucking crazy out there. Like there's yeah. no doubt about it. Ugh, you know what I, know. I mean? Like, I always, like, when I was homeless, I'm just like, yeah. you try and sleep on the fucking sidewalk and yeah. not get loaded. Yeah, or just like, dude, I know, I know like, like, like women and like other people in the community, the unhoused community, like dog, they don't take showers as a like prevention mechanism against like sexual assault. Right. That's fucked. Right. You know what I mean? So, and then like, yeah, dude, like, I was telling, like, you know, there was, like, a vicious murder, like, yo, like, somebody got, like, their head cut off, and that was after they got shot and stabbed, you know, and people get their tent set on fire, people try to set you on fire, um, they'll rob you, they'll sexually yeah. assault you, they'll rape you, you know what I mean, like, they'll stab you in your sleep, like, it's just, it's, it's, and it's just, and you, and you know what I mean, it could be some dumb shit, like, you weren't even involved in, like, you were just with them or around them, and they just associate you with it, you know what I mean, it's just the politics of it, and, like, you get end up getting fucked off. You know what I mean? So you smoke dope, just you smoke meth, stay up at night, and then like people like might do some downer during the day. They might smoke some fatty or eat some Zans or yeah. something to sleep during the day because it's safer. You know what I mean? So things like that. I, I would say understand like the societal systemic issues that exacerbate it, and like understand like, yo, a lot of times it's just like people on the street are just using drugs to survive. You know what I mean? Right. And like also like, I think people are just like 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 if I like so for example. If you see someone yelling about like Jesus and the rapture and this or that, people are like, oh, they're smoked out on meth. I'm like, no, that's like they're bipolar one, homie. Like, maybe they do use meth, but it's not right. like you know what I mean. It's like the the only factor. So people just they just say things like when they don't really have any idea what they're talking about. Right. And uh, can you recommend any resources for our listeners um, who want to learn more about harm reduction or how they can get involved? Yeah. So um, you can Google Harm Reduction Coalition. Um, Next Distro is a good resource. Never Years Alone is a good resource. Um, NASA.org is a good resource. Um, you can obviously, I think my email and my phone number is on my Instagram. You can, or you can go to my link tree and just hit contact me and message me and I'll always get back to you. I'll put that down below, but what is that for anyone who's just listening? My, my Instagram, it's, yeah. it's Narcan underscore Nate. Nice. Yeah. Oh, I heard there's a carbon copy of Narcan. Oh Nate. yeah, there's a full. It goes about like he got mad at me for writing that on his yeah. thing. Did I he, was joking. Did he? What did he say something to you? I don't remember. No, yeah, dude. No, like <laughs> Zol went in on him. Was like, yeah, she, change your name. Yeah, she was like, you're ranking it or something like that. I can't remember what she said, but she was like going in on him, and then you seen it. So then, Narcan underscore Nate. Yeah, Narcan underscore Nate. Yeah. And that's on TikTok and everything? It's on TikTok. Face, I got a Facebook page. I'm on LinkedIn under Nathan Smitty. And yeah. All right. And we'll link that all below. If you guys haven't, smash that follow button. Yeah. Hit the thumbs up, whatever yeah. you do. On yeah. Hit the, hit, the hit the bell on Instagram for like notifications. Because my shit's like shadow banned, dude. Like yeah. I'm so shadow banned on everything. Right. So you got to hit the bell for notifications. You're not going to see my shit. Do all that with my stuff, too. Yeah, do it all with the podcast, Trash Can Cut, uh, like Young Gods, Manufacturing. Uh, dude, you have so many fucking Instagrams. <laughs> I just, as long as you guys listen to this and you get something out of it, I'm happy. Okay. Um, but thank you for coming out. Yeah. Always a pleasure. Yes. Thank you for having me. And uh, hospitality. We will talk to you soon. Okay. All right. Appreciate it.